What is the closest you've come to dying? In college, the RA was my roommate. The second week of the semester, he had a conflict with a guy who was leaving food everywhere. It escalated really quickly to very specific death threats by means of poisoning with cyanide. The investigator said I got the dose meant for him. The only reason I am still alive is that I got dosed, got a three minute ride to class, and collapsed a moment later in class where my substitute fill-in was a registered nurse. That was in 1999. As of 2016, the FBI still doesn't know what happened to the guy. He vanished after trying to kill me. Was Boulder hopping in Joshua Tree as a teen? Was out with a few friends and as I was climbing, there was a gap between rocks. I looked down and the drop was probably 70 feet to the ground. My buddy clears the gap and I leap next and didn't quite make it. I was scrambling to get any grip I could on the rock face and was failing. Next thing I know, my friend grabs me and pulls me safely onto the ledge. Man, that was too close for comfort. Had a similar experience many years ago. Rock climbing out in the Rockies and I was climbing down a shallow rock dome about the size of a small house and my boot caught on something and flipped me over. I tumbled about 50 feet down a chute and somehow went from full speed tumble to wedged at the edge of the chute overhanging a 100 foot drop straight down. I got cut up pretty bad from the rolling fall and had to hang there for an hour until they could get a rope to me, still afraid of heights to this day. Currently fighting a rare and aggressive stomach cancer called Desmoplastic Small Round Cell Tumor. This cancer has less than 1,000 cases and affects mostly young Caucasian men. It is also very difficult to diagnose, since a blood test can't even detect it. Before I was diagnosed, I was literally having the life sucked out of me. Literally felt like I was slowly dying. Worst fatigue, nausea, indigestion, constipation, and stomach pain ever. In the beginning, I was given 3-4 months unless chemo was started immediately. Doing well right now though, trying to shrink the tumors I have so I can have them surgically removed. I'm also only 20 years old. Cancer sucks, especially so young when my life and career have just started. Well, I had lymphoma without knowing it for who even knows how long. Obviously, I was aware of how shitty I felt, but I had a massive phobia of doctors, so I didn't get it checked out until I had to go to the ER due to extreme chest pain and difficulty breathing. I had bilateral pleural effusions as well as cardiac tamponade so severe that the doctor told me I'd have died if I had waited another day or two to come in. I was eventually diagnosed with stage of A Hodgkin's lymphoma. It only goes up to IVB. It took three separate chemotherapy regimens over the course of nearly two years before I was considered to be in remission, which is where I thankfully remain today, four years later. What symptoms did the lymphoma begin with? In retrospect, the big ones were weight loss, fatigue, and difficulty breathing, specifically orthopnea which is where you struggle to breathe lying down. I later learned that the one telltale sign that suggests some form of cancer was the fact that I had severe supraclavicular lymphadenopathy, which is a fancy way of saying that the lymph nodes between my collarbone and the base of my neck were swollen and hard as a rock, particularly the fact that it was only like that on the left side. Other minor symptoms that might not mean much on their own, but which might indicate a real problem when you have them together would be decreased appetite, frequent night sweats, and pain in the gallbladder with alcohol consumption. I was in a crowd crush during a public World Cup viewing party. Was France against Croatia for the finals and we were in Paris watching it so the crowd was absolutely insane. There were people from the back yelling, push, even though we were in an enclosed space. They didn't know that, I guess. But me and my friend were small teenage girls at the time. We're unlucky enough to be right at the metal barrier, and we were getting pressed up against it, literally squeezing out diaprams. The crowd was rippling and surging like we were in a wave pool, and my feet were completely off the ground. I had nowhere to move my arms and no control over my legs. We were screaming for help with our last breaths, and we were lifted out by riot cops. Me and my friend both had massive bruises in the shape of the rails from the barrier on our stomachs. 
About a year ago, I shot just a little over a gram of meth into my arm and OD'd hard, had a total complete whiteout. I poured sweat for what I assume was hours and ended up dehydrated, heart felt like it was gonna blow, and right before my eyes hit the back of my skull, I temporarily went deaf and blind. Woke up nine hours later with no idea what just happened, but I'm happy to say I'm a year sober because of it. Glad you're still here, buddy. First year of COVID was rough on me, was recovering from surgery and wasn't given pain meds so was in rough shape. I relapsed on Fent. I was house sitting for my buddy and went out to my truck for a toke. Woke up three hours later gasping for air. Couldn't walk, talk or breath. I must have been slumped over on my right arm cause I pinched a nerve and lost the use of my hand for almost six months. I count my blessings, that's all it was and that I woke up at all. Have stayed away from it ever since. After being on birth control for like a month, I ended up with two blood clots in my brain. A big one on one side that was going into my jugular, a small one on the other side causing my brain to swell, that led to me having a seizure. I'd taken about 7 aspirin in the last 12 hours because of the migraines leading to the seizure. And the doctors said that if I hadn't taken the aspirin and thinned my blood, then I would have had a stroke and potentially died. It happened when I was at work too. Not the most glamorous thing, being wheeled out of the employee bathroom on a stretcher. Just wanted to piss in peace. I had the Marina IUD, and I ended up with five surgeries in less than five years. I almost bled to death before I could find a guy that would listen to me. Then I finally got a hysterectomy, but still had my ovaries. My intestines ended up wrapped around my right ovary and lost half my stomach from the buildup of stomach bile backed up, then lost about 50 pounds before the same doctor who did the first surgery would go in and do explore surgery and couldn't even find my ovary. Once it was found, it was black and dead with blood clots throughout my body. I didn't realize nor did the doctor how close he almost let me die. My ex had his hands wrapped around my doctor's neck when he let him know while I was recovering. I can't remember exactly how old I was, but probably about 8 or 9. I was scheduled to have surgery, and my mom was driving us to the hospital. On a freeway close to our destination, someone rear-ended us. It completely smashed in the trunk and the back seat, and the car spun several times before coming to a stop. The first person who stopped to help us happened to be an off-duty paramedic. I was conscious and unhurt, but freaked out. My mom had some injuries and had lost consciousness. When the ambulances came, I was taken to the hospital we were going to, and I had my surgery as scheduled. My mom was taken to another hospital, and we ended up being released close to the same time. Ordinarily, I would have been in the back seat, but I had convinced my mom to let me sit in the front passenger seat that day. I would undoubtedly have died instantly in that crash if I'd been back there. When my father went to the impound lot to check the wreckage for anything salvageable, he couldn't even remove my little brother's car seat. Oh, and that off-duty paramedic? He went to the hospital with my mom and he kept me up to date on how she was doing. He also was the one who contacted my father about what happened. We stayed in touch for several years after that. Six years ago, came down with double pneumonia and sepsis, coughing up blood and hallucinating. My O2 level was 74, which in my school was a passing grade. 10 days in hospital. The hallucinations were not pretty pink dancing mushrooms. This is my first anniversary of pancreatic cancer surgery. Turned bright yellow and was in agony. Three hits of morphine. Didn't stop the pain. Went to Richardson to one of the three doctors qualified to do the surgery in Texas. Cancer was encapsulated and 34 lymph nodes show no spread. Will be going for quarterly checkup next week. One third of pancreas is gone along with part of my stomach and small intestine, all tied together. Lost about 70 pounds and using half the units of insulin as before. Basically, baritorac surgery. That was another 10-day hospital stay. Mine happened when I was really young. We went out sledding in the Blue Mountains of Washington. I think I was probably three or four. I know I didn't have siblings with me yet, and I was the oldest. My uncle and dad went down the hill first and hiked back up. Then they put me on the big black inner tube and sent me down the hill. Everything was fast and new, and then I was in a hole with water running at my feet. I was trying to stand on the inner tube to keep my feet out of the water. 
Adults were screaming for me, but I couldn't process what was happening. Eventually, they found me down the snow hole. I know my uncle ran back up the hill and got a rope and brought it back down to drag me out. I don't remember how I put the rope on myself, but I remember getting back up the hill and stripped down to my underwear, and my uncle put his big fluffy socks on my legs and his jacket on me. Sometimes I think back on it and wonder if I did die, and this is all some shitty dream after the fact. Where do I start? Fell off a long flight of stairs, woke up in a hospital bed with a subdural hematoma diagnosis. Eventually, I made a full recovery. Years later, during a particularly dark period of my life, I got extremely drunk. Went into a new punk rock bar in the city. I was likely the only Indian within a mile radius. An argument ensued with another drunk fellow at the pool table. This ended with me being ganged up by a group or four, six guys outside the bar beat to within an inch of my life. Somehow made it home, lived through that. Fast forward years later, I started to get into an active lifestyle with lots of exercise, mindfulness, good eating, etc. I started riding my bike almost daily, covering between 10-15 miles a day and averaging 100-300 miles a week. On an unfortunate night, when I did not have my cell or wallet with me, I finished a late Nike biking session and felt like a good reason to celebrate at a bar on my way home. I stopped by and had a few drinks, and since it was late, I decided to bike back home. I was maybe three drinks in and didn't feel too inebriated to bike, took the side streets to avoid traffic, and to my dismay, I didn't have my nightlight battery charged, didn't see a patch of loose rocks, slipped on a slow turn, took a beating in the process, multiple compound fractures of my right clavicle. God only knows how I managed to get back home. Must have been the adrenaline rush from the fall. Sometimes I really wonder how I get so lucky surviving each of these incidents without any worse outcomes. Please always have working co-detectors. Heat went out when it was 20-ish degrees outside. We were renters and thus at mercy of property management. Technician who came wasn't certified for gas units and stuffed a rag in pipe until he could figure out the issue the next day. Three hours later, carbon monoxide detectors sounded. We evacuated and called 911. Fire department wouldn't even enter in gear because CO levels were so high. In retrospect, our dogs were acting off, but it was also really damn cold in the house. We lived away from family at the time and are thinking it could have been three plus days until our workplaces really followed through on our absence. I feel nauseous thinking about it. When I was really little growing up, I used to able to play with anything, and when I was in the car with my family on our way back home from getting ice cream, I was messing with the seat belt from the seat next to me, and somehow got it and the one on my seat wrapped around my neck, I couldn't make a noise, and my older siblings were too little at the time to realize what was happening. Luckily, my mom looked in the rearview mirror and saw she swerved into a random parking lot and jumped out and tried to take it off, but it was too tight to unwrap. She was screaming at my brother to look for scissors in the glove box while she tried to keep the straps away from my neck. She told me it was so tight she couldn't even fit two fingers between my neck and the seat belts. Luckily, my mom kept scissors in the glove box or I'd be dead. After two years of sobriety, I relapsed and binge drank for several days with no food or nutrients. I depleted my potassium level to 1.5 millimeter mol L. An ER nurse of 20 years experience said it was the lowest they had ever seen, and she didn't know how I was even walking around. When I saw my PCP after being discharged from the ICU a few days later, the first thing she said to me was that I was lucky to be alive. I have two near-death experiences that were also alcohol-related. I was taken to the ER unconscious with a blood alcohol of 46. I'm only 5'1 and weighed less than 100 FLBs at the time. They called my family to come to the ICU to say their goodbyes as I was an organ failure. The second event was a suicide attempt due to my inability to stay sober and hurting everyone I loved. I swallowed 60 amitriptyline pills and was unconscious on my bathroom floor when the police broke the door down. I am thankfully 14 plus years sober and have zero resemblance to that self-destructive woman. 
sudden crushing chest tightness and gasping for air in bumper to bumper traffic on the outskirts of Antigua, Guatemala. Was with a couple buddies on our way to get this, a day of the dead celebration. What saved my life was a police truck about five cars back, lights and sirens to a rural hospital in the back of the flatbed truck. I'm an RN, so knew the gravity of the situation, was teaching my friend to give me CPR en route as I started to fade in and out of consciousness. Turned out to be critically low potassium, causing my muscles, inclusive of my diagram, to lock up. Minutes from dead happened last year at 31 years old. One year ago today, actually, I was taking a hot girl. Read Crippling Depression Hike with my best friend. We were about three miles down the trail, snacking on bananas and hazelnuts and taking in the views of the sunset. And my throat closed up. I couldn't talk. I couldn't call for help. And I fell behind on the trail. So I decided to walk back, alone, in the dark. My friend found me, collapsed and turning gray. She dialed 911 and held my hand and prayed over me until a helicopter flew in to bring me back to safety. Somehow, I developed a very severe nut allergy since my childhood. It's a miracle nothing triggered a reaction when I was totally alone. I do miss Reese's Cups. A fair deal, though. Whoever finds this, please enjoy a Reese's Cup for me today. I had Vasa Previa, Placenta Previa, and Placenta Accreta. Basically, my placenta couldn't placenta very well, and my baby had his feng shui all messed up in his first apartment. Seven months pregnant, and was in the hospital for time up until my scheduled C-section. I was in for about a month at that point. Little shit decided to come at 3 a.m., three days before the scheduled C-section, while I'm eating cheesecake and watching Alien. I ended up having three blood transfusions and a healthy Premi baby. Fun fact, Vasa Previa is rare, and I was the third case in that hospital's history, and it's been mentioned on Grey's Anatomy and The Good Doctor. Less fun fact, I definitely have PTSD with pregnancy traumas. I was on my way to the office riding a bike on a bike path. A distracted driver made a wrong turn and ended up driving onto the bike path and hit me with their Dodge Charger. I flew off the bike and towards the pavement, but I'll pause there to give you a bit of a breakdown of what occurred. Also, keep in mind that I am a smaller person at 5 or 4 and 107 pounds, and at the time I was 31 years old. Okay, so the breakdown on the things that helped prevent critical or fatal injuries. If it had been just a few degrees warmer, I would not have been wearing a hoodie, pants, and tube socks. While I definitely did not leave unscathed, these items of clothing held up really well and protected me from getting horrible road rash or worse. Though I did bust my knee open quite nicely. I had a Bose earbud in. If you don't know, these are a bit different than AirPods and jut out of the ear. I had one in on my left ear but was not listening to anything. I mainly keep one in just in case a call comes in or in case I need to ask Siri to text someone. However, because I had the one in my left ear, that earbud was the buffer between my head and the pavement. I did still hit part of my head and got a concussion, bruised skull, busted eye, and my ear got cut from the earbud's impact but better than it could have been. According to reports from the scene, I blacked out on impact. I must have seen the car just before impact, and so I stood ever so slightly. This meant that the bulk of impact went for my knee, ankle, and foot on my right side, and is most likely why I flew off the bike, rather than ending up under the car with the bike. I lost feeling in my right leg and had fractures and nerve damage, had to learn to walk again, but again better than what else could have happened. I have a few other near-death experiences that involve me needing resuscitation, but the above experience is most recent, and I'm still unpacking how I ended up being relatively okay. Writing it out helps. Almost drowned as a kid. I remember it pretty vividly. I was walking in the water and holding onto a rock wall. The wall ended and I let go and took another step, which happened to be a bit of a drop off. I couldn't swim yet. I remember struggling to get above the water and seeing my mom laying on the shore talking to my aunt. I honestly don't remember feeling scared. I do remember feeling aggravated that my mom was right there and didn't see or hear me. Then she did luckily. Almost bleed to death after having my daughter. 
They massaged my uterus standard procedure to check how it was contracting blood output and the nurse just goes, uh oh. I was like, is that bad? She goes, it's a little more blood than we like to see. Not too bad though. After that it gets a little fuzzy to me. Lots of nurses, two big shots in my butt and more massages. They took my baby and gave her to my husband and sent my mom out of the room. I just remember feeling really hot and tired. They hooked me up to a fentanyl drip and two of the nurses each took one of my hands and told me to squeeze because this is going to hurt. And my OB reached inside of me and gave me a DNOMC. So she scraped the inside of my uterus, suspecting retained placenta. There was. I lost over a liter of blood. My husband said that the clots that were coming out of me came out and unfolded on the table as big as a dinner plate. I should have gotten a transfusion, but I said I didn't want one unless it was going to die without it. That was kind of dumb because it took me literally months to feel normal again. And I couldn't even sit up in bed for like two days without feeling like I was going to pass out. Fun times. I had a rare internal bleed two years ago that got worse when the first doctor tried to stop it. The third doctor finally stopped it. All the attempts happened over a day and a half. I lost a ton of blood, transfused as fast as they could get it in me, went into respiratory distress, and was intubated. They told my sister to wait by the phone because they weren't sure I'd make it. Thinking about it now, it wouldn't have been a bad way to go. My last memory, after 911 and the ambulance ride, was going under for an endoscopy. I wasn't in pain and wasn't distressed, just puking a lot of blood. My biggest concern was my dogs, getting them taken care of and not wanting to disappear on them. The thought of them wondering where I went is more painful than the thought of dying. Was kayaking down the Zambezi River. A hippo came right up under my ex-husband's and my canoe and lifted it out of the water. Looked around and down straight into its huge pink mouth and two big brown teeth. Brain calculated wildly. If we went into the water, could we swim to the riverbank in time before one of the crocs per 10 meters of river got us? Hippo dropped his head and we just went back down into the water. Still in canoe. Upright, the day before we had been charged by an injured hippo which came out of the water and bellowed and ran straight for us. Guide fired his pistol in the air and it lurched and ran back into the water. Love Zimbabwe, but I won't be doing that stuff again. Now I have kids. When younger I was driving out to a dinner with work friends. The restaurant was outdoors near an ocean river inlet where the gravel parking lot was next to. No guardrails. I drove in, music blaring, saw some friends already there. I looking over, waving, and not paying attention, kept driving. Saw everyone's face get scared, and then I looked forward, and when I hit the brakes and slid on the gravel, one tire was almost tipping over the edge of the side. Another split second, and I would have driven off the edge. They have since put guardrails in.